Oh, dude, check out this super rare stone sword. Oh yeah, well, what about this spiked club? Was that supposed to impress me? Hey, it's actually really good. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, are you tired of feeling like everyone else? Looking like everyone else? Sure, maybe you don't necessarily use rivers of blood, but you can always get rarer. There are weapons in this game you probably have no idea you can actually even get, and the reason is simply because they have such a low drop rate from enemies you simply don't have any reason to kill on repeat other than for this specific purpose. And of course, in order to make this collection worth the farming, every weapon on this list is super usable and buildable around, and thus worth having in your inventory for sure. If you don't want to get them yourself, then hopefully you get use out of this as just a general showcase of some of the rare drops in all of Elden Ring. Specifically, six more rare and good weapons. These are all random chance drop weapons, weapons that you may have to really earn through kill after kill of farming, depending on your personal luck. But you can enhance that luck in Elden Ring quite easily for any player using a couple of specific methods. First, raise your arcane attribute. Your arcane stat is directly related to your item discovery stat. And an easy way to do this is the silver tier mask, raising your arcane by eight in exchange for lowering your attack power a little bit. You can also get the Silver Scarab Talisman specifically made to raise item discovery. This one is found in the hidden path to the Hallig Tree Dungeon by jumping off the landing in the middle to find an invisible floor. Immediately to the left is an inlet in the wall. Break the illusion wall within there and grab the talisman from the chest inside. Then finally, you can use the consumable item Silver Pickled Foul Foot, which lasts for three minutes to increase your item discovery for that period. Onto the weapons themselves then, without further ado, first up today we have the Noble Slender Sword. This straight sword is made out of of literal gold, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Physically speaking, it is the longest of all of the short swords in the game, so the range of this weapon is sublime. And then statistically speaking, this is actually the best dexterity scaling straight sword in the game with great AR at plus 25 as well. While it comes with the square off weapon skill as a base, it can be infused with any Ash of War that you want, and also it can be buffed by magic and weapon greases. And even power stancing two of these together is really good due to their long range combined with the deck scaling. The only issue with this weapon is that it has a 0.5% drop chance. Yeah, half a percent. You heard that right. However, to offset this, at least the enemies that do drop it are found in decently sized groups, with the easiest one to farm being right beside the Waypoint Ruins in Limgrave, immediately west, following a caravan. You are looking to kill any of the common noble enemies that draw a sword when engaged, but it can be easier to just wipe out the whole field of people and loot them as a bunch. In any case, after anywhere, up to a few dozen attempts depending on your luck, one of them will drop this sword just for you. Secondly, we have the Gross Messer Curved Sword. This weapon is relatively standard in how it looks, being a very simple real-life sword design. And in practice within the game, this is simply a nice, high-damaging, very, very large curved sword. The curved sword moveset in general is quite good, and this is simply one with great AR and range, as well as looking different from what most other players will be using for a curved sword. The base skill on this weapon is spinning slash, but it can be replaced. And the drop rate for this one is going to be around 2%, dropping specifically from skeleton enemies in catacombs who wield this weapon without any others, meaning not the ones who have shields or ranged weapons. An easy one to farm is in the Tombsward catacombs, right through the imp seal door in front of the grace in the back left of the room, one of these skeletons will spawn. Kill that one, reset at the grace, and then just repeat until the weapon falls into your hands. There's other ones in this catacombs, but they're further in from the grace. Third up then today is the Executioner's Great Axe. A full-on guillotine on a stick, this thing is gnarly and just axing to take some heads. Not necessarily the highest AR on a Great Axe, however, it does have incredible range compared to most of them, as well as a 115 crit rating, which is the highest that I have seen on a Great Axe. And the base skill on the weapon is War Cry, though it can be infused with Ashes of War and also buffed using magic or weapon greases to increase the effectiveness further. The drop rate for this one is 4%, which sounds quite lovely in comparison to the previous two, but the enemy is a bit further from a sight of grace than the others so far, and a bit tougher to kill too, being the skeleton enemy who wields this specific weapon themselves. A neat trick for this is to get any weapon that says it is strong against those who live in death, that refers to the skeleton enemies. It does extra damage to them, and also it insta-kills them on the last hit rather than letting them respawn afterwards. The easiest one of this enemy to farm is in the Eastern Kaled from the Church of the Plague, Sight of Grace, head to the Northeast until you see a hunched over statue. Continue just past the statue and a friend will crawl out of the ground, murder them with impunity, 
then fast travel back to the site of grace, and then repeat this process and eventually the axe will drop for you. Fourthly comes the Spite Club Hammer, uniquely being a hammer that causes bleed and scales extremely well on a cult affinity with arcane. Don't be put off by its simple looks, it may just be a big pointy log, but this thing, when actually built up right, gets sort of nasty in the best of ways, especially when you power stance two of them together. It's also worth noting this weapon has a unique strong attack, instead of the two slams that a hammer normally has, it does a crossing diagonal left and right pattern, changing up the angle of attack. The base weapon skill on it is Barbaric Roar, raising your attack power and changing your heavy attack into one with more hits and more forward momentum. In actual practice, I'd say something more like Wild Strikes is actually incredible for this because of the speed of the hits, and trust me, once you get arcaned up, good to go, this thing will start hitting like a truck. The drop rate on this one is around 2%, and the enemies who drop it are any of the larger demi-humans who wield it, with the easiest one to farm being near the Volcano Cave site of Grace in northern Mount Gelmir. Literally just walk out to the entrance of the cave, slap the guy that's standing there, then go back to the Grace and reset until this drops for you. This is the one that took me the longest, weirdly, out of all of them. I guess if you spend a whole day farming low drop chance items just through sheer probability though, eventually a 2% drop chance will instead feel like a half percent drop chance, am I right? I should go outside more. Fifth then is going to be the Watchdog's Great Sword, the weapon of the Burial Urn Watchdogs. This is just a real neat looking weapon, a full on slab of stone that was somehow carved perfectly without impurities, all centered around an eye shaped hilt, which apparently used to have a jewel before it was stolen. The AR of this weapon is really high up there, but not quite the highest of a colossal sword by any means. It is still though insanely good, hitting S strength scaling when you set it to heavy, which immediately puts this in contention for one of the best colossal swords around. That said, this one here is more just around for how rare it is, simply because the enemies that they drop from are just not often killed purposefully. Specifically, they drop from the non-boss versions of the specifically great sword wielding watchdogs, of which as far as I'm aware, there are only two in the entire game. The easier of the two to repeatedly fight is in the giant conquering hero's grave at the top of the mountaintop of the giants. From the site of grace, just head down down these stairs and then out the window and you'll find him down there in shadow mode. Wait until you can bring him into the circle of light and then he'll be in a vulnerable state waiting for you to hit him. The drop rate on these bad boys is a smooth 8%, which sounds great until you realize how annoying that these guys can be. However, with the right strategy, you can pretty much just destroy them before they can hurt you. In the footage, I have literally the minimum required strength to two hand this hammer with lion's claw. It is the best method that I have found of doing this on my even non-strength build, so work out whatever fits your build the best. Finally then, a bit of a special entry, the Sun Realm Shield. Obviously as this is a shield, I wouldn't expect you to actually build around it, and I wouldn't even necessarily class it as a particularly good shield compared to the others. However, it is extremely rare, an unusual enemy that it's attached to, and also the lore on this thing is quite neat as well as being quite impactful. So if you don't find the shield yourself, at least you get to see the lore here in this video. Shield of Honor, depicting a city crowned by the sun. It has seen better days. Much like the wear upon this shield, the seat of the sun is long faded away. This directly implies that this shield, wielded by an undead skeleton, has ties to an Orlando, the big city of Dark Souls 1. Now this could just be a fun little easter egg that they put in a random low drop chance shield, or it could be a very significant piece of lore, telling us that Elden Ring takes place in the same world as Dark Souls, just significantly in the future, to a point where what once was a massive sprawling cityscape is now nothing but a legend, chipping and rotting off of the shield of a long undead warrior from ages ago. To get this thing for yourself if you'd like to have it, you need to kill any skeleton enemy who is wielding it, with the easiest one to farm being right near the Hermit Merchant's Shack in the outer circle beyond Landell, the capital city. Directly beside this site of grace, just travel right over and whack a mole before he can even come out of the ground. Only the one on the left drops the shield, then go back to the site of grace, reset, and repeat until it happens for you. And that'll just about do it. A full on six super rare, good build worthy weapons worth your time and effort, even though it may be quite a fair bit of it to get them. Are any of these interesting to you? Maybe a bit of power stance noble swords or even power stance spiked clubs. Like if you like the video, subscribe with the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.